Yes, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We worship you, O Lord God. You are worthy to be praised. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. That we are alive today. It can only be because of you. Yes, Lord, we are grateful for this awesome day. We thank you, O Lord God, for this special day. We thank you that you did not allow our enemies to be laughing at us. We thank you, O Lord God, because this year's Father's Day is indeed a special one. A lot of us have gone through so much, but you have kept us standing. Father God, we are here to appreciate you. We are here to honor the men that are made in your image, that are going according to your precept. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Our God is awesome. If you are excited to be in church today, I want you to scream hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, what can I say? I was just there worshiping along, and I was thinking, mm, our men, I think mm, the horns that we enjoyed, I think you should have brought it for Mother's Day. I think it should have been for Mother's Day. You should have just said, okay, mothers, this is how we want to just honor God in your life. So you played a little bit of Pasha. Eh? Hallelujah. But how we could do now? We we'll forgive them. They said I should forgive you. So we forgive you. God bless you. That was awesome. That was awesome. And of course, <laughs> our children, woo, woo, our awesome children, we have a great future. Uh -huh. And you saw how the leader was busy giving the mics and, you know, oh my goodness, choir, choir leader. I don't know what I will call him yet, but um, he's coming up and coming up real fast. And of course, our dance, no matter, even if you give them two minutes, they know how to worship God. So I want us to just give God a clap offering for these awesome children that we are blessed with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So here I am, just a few words of exhortation. I give them a whole lot of Bible passages, but... Um, I don't know if I'll be able to go through everything. So just to encourage our fathers. In heaven's glorious embassy, I will say we have very special fathers. Very, very special fathers. And uh, the theme that I have chosen for today is keeping focused on fatherhood. Keeping focused on fatherhood. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 to 17, 1 Corinthians 4, 14 to 17 says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, 
I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which, is, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. I actually want to change that a little bit, and I want to say, for this cause have I sent unto you John Egbewele Omewa, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of the ways which be in Christ. Hallelujah. That is the way I would write that Bible if I were to write it, because I am seeing something very unique in this father we have in the house. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1 to 2 is such powerful, such powerful scripture that if we are only living by that scripture alone, we will be incredible children of God. Brethren, Father's Day is a special day. It's a day that has been set aside to honor all fathers. We are not celebrating sperm donors. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. We are not celebrating sperm donors. We are not celebrating child abusers and child molesters. We are not celebrating those that call themselves fathers but are not there when needed. We are celebrating today true fathers. Fathers that are made in the image and likeness of our God. Amen? It is a day for us to appreciate them, to honor them. But before we do that, I want us for 30 seconds, we are going to stand up and we are going to appreciate the father of fathers, our Father who art in heaven, who came down from heaven to earth to show us the way. He came to this earth and died on the cross and he was buried and rose again and went back. And he did not leave us empty. He sent us the Holy Spirit. I don't know which way you want to use to just honor this God. But I would say, our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down. Oh, our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down. Yes. Oh, our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Glory, hallelujah! Hallelujah. Please be seated. After the almighty God, Remember, I'm just exalting you today. I want to secondly remember. I want to remember. The father 
that has brought me into this earth through my mother. I don't know about you. I don't know how you came to this earth. But for me, I had a father that was a mentor, an incredible man, a man that sacrificed everything. Never drank, never smoked. He would sleep with his pen and paper in his hands, calculating how to take care of his nine children. That is the kind of father. He's no longer here, but I want to appreciate him. And I, we, we call him Didio, but he's ambassador. An incredible man. I don't know about you. If I were you, for another 30 seconds, I want you to just go ahead and appreciate your father, whether he's alive or he's gone. Honor him and say, Father, I thank you for all that you have done for me. If not for anything that I am breathing is because you brought me into this world. Father God, I thank you. Daddy, ah, I believe you made it because I know how you ended up. Father God, I just thank you for my father who brought me, who made a future for me and for my siblings and grounded us in prayers and academically positioned us. Father, I just thank you for this man of God. Hallelujah. Thirdly, I just want to thank my spiritual father, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Ah, you're clapping for him. I want to thank God. I personally had an encounter with him, one-on-one. -on -one, that's how I got born again. He has been more than a father to me. I met him when I was 26. I'm from 26 to, you know, my age. He has been there for me. In fact, at a point, my biological father was jealous of him. He has been awesome. Finally, before I appreciate you men, I would like to thank God for the man that my father handed me over to. Hmm. He has been a father to me. He has been a father to the six children that God has blessed us with. As a woman with disability, Nobody knows me like this man. Yes, nobody knows me like this man. Two years after I was disabled was when he decided to be my husband. Hallelujah. I want to say that this man in the house is a wonderful man. A man that cares for me so much that there is nowhere that I step out to that he doesn't hold my hand like a little girl holding on to her father or her father holding on to her, especially when that territory is unknown. Have you ever seen Pastor not holding me? Ah, ah, he is too much. Ah, I don't know how to speak Ghana, Ghanaian language, but I would say C, C, B, K, E, J, O. I beg, appreciate this man of God for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many, today is not such a good day. It's a very difficult time for many. It is a sad day because they wish their fathers were around to celebrate them. I want to tell you, don't worry, don't worry. The comforter is there. He will comfort you and he will ensure that the children that the God has given to you see their father and celebrate their father for you. And remember, if your father is not here, especially the ladies, your husband is your father, okay? So the way you want to celebrate your father, celebrate your husband because you're his first daughter. Hallelujah. Sadly, today we have fathers that are not worth being celebrated. We have fathers that are accidental fathers. 
We have fathers that are child fathers because they did not know how to keep their pants on. We are going to encourage all the young people, please position yourself to be honored. Did you hear what I said? Position yourself to be honored as a father because it is worth it. Keep yourself together. Keep those pants zipped up. There is a time coming that it will not be anything to you. Don't get too excited. That time is coming. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. So now, going back to keeping focused on fatherhood. What does it mean to be, to be focused? To be focused. And I said keeping focused because I know a lot of you are focused. But I'm saying keeping focused. The dictionary says focus is just giving a lot of attention to one particular thing. Giving a lot of attention to your time, to your effort, to how you provide, how you care. It's just giving that attention. Brethren, to keep focus is not an easy thing. And honestly speaking, I say thank you to all of you that are keeping focus. You are doing well, and God, as our pastor said, he's recording it. And because he's recording it, he's going to reward you. Amen? Fatherhood is a great responsibility. It is a state of responsibility or a state of being responsible for all that God has created. When God created Adam, he put him in the garden and he said, give everything here a name and care for them. And that is why when there is naming ceremony, who gives the name? Come on, who gives the name? Fathers. Because that is a great assignment that God has given to you. To give names to whatever, whatever you desire. So I thank God for the names that you have given your children. And I know the names are very meaningful. Fatherhood, brethren, it is a choice. You don't have to be fathers if you know the responsibility is too great for you. But because you decided, I want to be a father, I want to be called among the fathers, I want to say, keep keeping focused on that fatherhood. Good fathers, they are not born. Good fathers are made. Amen? What did I say? Good fathers are made, and it, it's not an easy work. So I thank God, but today I'm just going to remind you a little bit of the responsibility that God has given to you that you're doing, that I want you to keep doing. God is a giver, according to John 16. So as a father, you're expected to be a giver. Whenever the children call upon you, don't think twice. Give. God is saying, he gave us his only begotten son, according to John 16, 3, 16. And that is what the whole mankind is enjoying, because God gave. God is a provider. Remember what he says in Philippians 4, 19? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Fathers, God called you the head. Look at somebody's head. Look at somebody's head. Mm -hmm. What do you see on the head? I believe you can't see the brain, but the brain is there, right? What else do you see? You see hair, okay. You see eyes. You see nose. You see the mouth. 
Are you looking at the person or you're just what you have memorized? When you look at the head, you see all these things. The brain that is unseen, that is doing all the thinking, the ears hearing, the nose smelling danger and all that, the mouth speaking awesome words. You see all this. That is what you are. You are all that. That is a whole lot. So if you are not functioning as the head, the body does not have the ability to do things. And we are the body. So until you tell us, move, that's when the hand can move. When you say go, that's when the leg can go. So as a father, if you are not keeping focus, you will not be able to provide and direct your children aright. So each time you look at a head, I would like you to say, that is me there. Honestly speaking, that is you. Everything the head is to the body, that is what you are to your household. Glory, hallelujah. So God is a provider. God has integrity. He does what he says he will do. Amen? Numbers 23:19. Numbers 23:19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said and shall not do it, or had he spoken and shall not make it good. Brethren, please, say and do what you say you will do. Because that is how you can groom awesome children. I want to tell you, brethren, that it is raising children is not bringing that cane to whip them. They are watching you, and they are copying what you're doing, imitating. I don't know about you, but I see my sons, the way they, they copy their father, the things, in fact, I'll show you a video in a while. The things that I see them do are incredible. So it's like I have um, four husbands in the house because they are imitating their father. And as my daughters were growing up, I remember them putting their tiny feet inside my shoes. What are they doing? They want to be just like mommy. So please, have integrity. Have empathy. God is a compassionate God. My daughter used that. Psalm 103 verse 13. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Psalm 103 verse 13. Do you really have compassion on your children? When they mess up, is it the rod that comes out or the words to say that way you're going is not the right way? And before I move away from that, a couple of weeks ago, the pastor and I went to the children's department to talk to them, rather to respond to some of the questions they had. And they had a lot of things about you that is not so good. They say that some parents are abusers. Uh-uh, that doesn't work in America. If I hear, I'm standing here now. The woman of God was here, so I'm here now. As a professional, if I hear you have abused any of my children, I will do something about it. Did you hear what I said? If these children downstairs come and say, Mommy, Daddy abused me, I will do something about it so fast that your head will spin. So you better not mess around with my children. Did you hear me? 
Okay, let me go back to being a preacher. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I would like you to just guide them. Direct them. They may go aside. The Bible tells us to train up the child the way he should go. But the Bible was silent about what would happen between when they are small and when they are grown. Please just be there. Mentor them. Watch them. Don't ignore them. Don't bring out the rod because you might be in jail or CPS will carry your children from you. There are ways to discipline children. If you don't know, come, I will teach you. Amen? Guide them, direct them. Keep doing it if you're doing it. I'm talking about keeping focused on fatherhood. We are told also that God guides his children. He knows those that are his. By the way, do you know your children? Do you know your children? Do you really, really, really know your children? Uh-huh. Silence. A lot of parents do not know their children. It, every child is unique. Every child is special. I have a grandchild that is already thinking about how he will pay his bills. While the other grandson is just busy calculating everything he sees, numbers, he's always calculating, but the other one is thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? How will I take care of my household? Who will I know to marry? You know, he's eight years old. He wants to know, how will he know when to get married? And so we have told him, let us get to that bridge and we'll cross it. Every child is unique. In fact, this child I was talking about, you know the storm that happened, what day, Friday? Thursday night. This child came to me. We were all outside at the camp in the kitchen. He said, Nana. Yes. He said, what is God trying to tell us? Because it was getting dark. It was daytime. It was, he said, what is God trying to tell us? So I had to ask the other mothers around me, please, what is God trying to tell us? See the sky. There are children that are always thinking. So if we don't guide them, they will go astray. The Lord will help us, especially fathers. I wished his father, his father was there. His father couldn't respond. I wish pastor had been there to respond to him. Amen. It is just incredible the way their brains function. So like I have said earlier on, God expects you to mentor, to train, to encourage your children. I'm skipping it because there's quite a few things that I want done before the service finishes. God corrects his children in love. Hebrews 12, 6 to 8. Hebrews 12, 6 to 8 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, Whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You would not think the B word would be in the Bible, but it is right there. I'm not telling you do not chase in your child. What I'm saying is don't abuse your child. If you say, ah, oh, we're in America, I cannot talk, then guess what? America will talk for you. So please, chasing your child in love, in love. What did I say? Keeping what? On fatherhood. A house that does not have a father, wow, 
it's it's a it's like a desolate land. I remember I don't know the air that men carry. Very special air. It's different from the woman's air. When my father died, it was like the house was empty. It just became very empty. We were all there, but it was empty. That is how powerful you are in your home. You cannot afford to bring out a spirit that would mess up that incredible air that God has placed in you. Praise the Lord. Love your children. Correct them. Chasten them. When the need arises, otherwise by the time you are always shouting and yelling, the children will become deaf to you. Honestly, you will say who is there and you will hear silence because there will be nobody there. They heard you, but they didn't hear you. But if you are a loving father, a loving parent, who is there? All the children will come running to you. Love is incredible. God does not give up on his children. If God were to give up on us, none of us would be seated here. Please don't give up on those children. Keep on keeping on. You haven't seen anything yet. They are going to make it and make it big. Don't give up on them. It is just that in-between training and adulthood. By the time they finish everything, they will come back to the training that you have given them. Amen? I'm rounding up. God is future-oriented. He's the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. The Bible says we are to leave inheritance for our children's children, according to Proverbs 13.22. Proverbs 13.22 says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. When we read those words, we think that it is silver and gold and houses and all those material things. If you're able, praise God, hallelujah, do it. But Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Proverbs 22, 1. What you are leaving for your children should not be just material wealth. Because in accumulating material wealth, you are going to lose out on the children. Before you blink, they will be grown. And you will say, where are my children? They're gone. No way for you to impact their lives anymore. So God expects you to groom your children be a good father. Be there for them. The blessing of a father, it's so incredible. Children that are here, please, I'm telling you, it is very important. Because now the children that we have, they are nearly, nearly like their parents. What do I mean? materialistic. That is why they will ask you, what have you left for them after you go? What are you leaving for them? Yeah, children are asking such questions. It's because of what you presented to them. You're working and working and working and working and working and working. What are you accumulating? Wealth. And maybe they even know about the mistress outside. A good name. A good name is the best thing you can give a child. It's not material wealth. Praise the Lord. Now, quickly. Oh, my goodness. 
the blessings of a father, children position yourself to be blessed. Anyone that honors parents is promised a long life. How many of you want to live long? Hallelujah, everybody. Please honor your parents. God bless Adam, and that blessing is what we are still enjoying. And Abraham blessed his son Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. Jacob prophesied over his children, and some of them till today. The blessings of their father is what they are enjoying. So please position yourself so that your father can bless you. My father blessed me. He blessed me. I have said it before. I went there. I couldn't kneel down then. I just sat by his um, cushion where he, puts, he used to put his feet. And I sat there. And I said, Daddy, every negative thing that you have said against me, please turn it to blessing. That man blessed me. He blessed me with sons, with daughters, with much. He blessed me. And that is what I'm enjoying. So if you want to enjoy your father or the blessings of your father, position yourself to be blessed. Hallelujah. The blessings of fatherhood. Third John 4, third John says, I says, third John 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Proverbs 23, 24, Proverbs 23, 24 says, The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Praise the Lord. I have gone one minute above the time I needed to spend. I have a message. Please, technical, I want you to put it together. We have had a father in the house that have been blessing us. And um, his children decided that this day, there will be something special they want to do for their father. And I believe that as you listen to what they have put together, children, I want you to go home and do the same for your fathers. Everyone here, your father is leaving, please do the same for them. So here is a little message. For the man of God, our father, in the house from his biological children. Technical. Yes. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I want to use this moment to appreciate you for being a caring and loving father. Hey, Dad. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for giving me my fine boy face. Now this play. No, 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 no. I'm spending quite long. Hi, Daddy. It's your favorite person in the whole wild world. Me. Here to say Happy Father's Day and to say thank you. Thank you for everything that you have done and you're still doing for us. Um, guidance, support, encouragement, lifting us up when we needed it, whoopings. I never needed it, of course, because I am perfect. Hey, Dad. Uh, with Father's Day around the corner, I just wanted to take a second to make this video and let you know how much you mean to me. Um, you're like the ultimate dad. Uh, seriously. Hey dad. Happy Father's Day. Um, I just want to take this time to tell you how much I appreciate you for all that you do. Thank you for everything you've instilled in us and always motivating us to him high and be our best. Hey dad, um, honestly, I just kind of want to just come here and just say thank you for everything. Um, you know, from the life lessons to the discipline. I know it hurt you more than it hurt me, so we don't, we don't really have to go. We don't have to talk about that too much. I want to thank you for how you've been so good to mommy and um, how you've also been good to your grandchildren. Family and Francis, I appreciate you for that. Thank you, daddy. Daddy will go all out for us. For me especially, I don't know about others. <laughs> he's always there. If you're in pain, that he's in pain. If you're sick, he's like he's sick. You know, he's just there for us. And he's there for me. 
I just want to take this time to let you know that you are a great dad, you know? So there's no room we are both in that I'm not proud to say that that's my dad. You know, I'm talking ever since I can remember, I'm talking back in the camp days when you were the praise and worship leader for um, the convention. Um, I always felt like I can, I can enter in a room because you're my dad, you know? And ever since then, I've carried that level of confidence till now. I just want to say that you are just amazing. You've been a father to us that you never had. You put your family first. The way you take care of my mother, I mean, you have lifted the bar to what, you know, I would expect my husband to do for me because my daddy does it. Why can't you do it? I can't thank you enough for always having my back and always showing me the way. Uh, your love and your wisdom has shaped me and turned me into the man that I am today. Um, you know, with school, it's been hard, and you're just always there to let me know that I can do it, let me know that there's nothing stopping me, and you're just always motivating me, and those conversations really do keep me going. Um, I want you to know that how you treat us and the things that you do for us do not go unnoticed at all. You were such an inspiration to me of what an ideal man, father, husband, and son of God should be. But, um... You know, you definitely want to say that you've had a great impact in my life um, and like the way that I kind of carry myself and the way that I see things, it's literally can only be thanks to you. Um, you know, I'll never forget like back when I used to play soccer, you were kind of at every single game. I know I had a, there was one time I just had a tournament and it was from like morning to night and you were just always there screaming from the sidelines and just cheering me on. And and I'm pretty sure at a point, I'm pretty sure they just let you be, uh, they let you just be the, the assistant coach because you would just start off the game in the in the stands and by the end of the game, you're just right next to the coach on the sidelines. Oh. I know a few years ago, just before I got married, you said you're no longer my father, you're now my friend. And thank you for being my friend. You've taught me to love God. You've taught me to be um, positive. You've taught me to be confident. You taught me that my mouth can take me places and anything I can see, I can get. Again, I want to say thank you. Uh, our relationship has progressed to more of a friendship. We scare each other game that we do. That is going to continue forever and ever and ever. So um, I still expect you to be here in the next like 50 years. Um, you taught me what it truly means to be a leader and a father. And I'll never forget those lessons. Um, you've given me an amazing life full of love, laughter, and memories that I'll cherish forever. <laughs> like you always being the loudest parent in all my soccer games, um, that's something I'm never going to forget. Um, I admire all the times that you've put our family first and the way that you've just supported the household. You're not just a dad, you're an amazing grandpa and an awesome husband to mom. And you've really set the bar high for how families should stick together. Thank you for always providing for us and ensuring that all of our needs are met. Literally, no matter what it can be, as soon as we text you or call you, you're always available to be there. I appreciate the way you treat mom. And I appreciate how you always put her first. Thank you for always being there. Um, I remember some years ago when I got in that car accident at school. And you literally, as soon as I got off the phone with you, you got in the car and you drove four hours just to get to me, just to make sure I was okay. Um, you mean so much to me. And you have become a father figure to many. But I am so proud to call you my father, my dad, and that I can be your daughter. Um, your favorite daughter. You've done an amazing job job and and now growing up and like just being where I am now I'm just starting to realize that no matter what point I was at like back then or even now like I always know like I'm good like I'm gonna be a success and like I'm just gonna be amazing and that that can only be thanks to you and the mindset that you've instilled with us the the way you've told us to look at life the way you've told us to speak about ourselves to speak about our loved ones and just the impact that you've had in in my life specifically, I can say that it's it's definitely changed. Uh, it's definitely changed me a lot in the bestest of ways. Most especially, I know princess will come say I won't, but I'm the I'm his favorite. So. I'm sorry, thank you, daddy. I love you. Happy Father's Day. Mwah. 
the man that I am today is because of the man that you are. And I'm grateful for that. And I can't wait for my kids to see what an amazing dad I have. I love you plenty. See you soon. Bye. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> I love you now and forever. You are the best and the greatest. Bye, Daddy. You're one incredible dad. And I hope you have an epic day. Uh, kick back, relax, and know that you're loved by us and the whole entire church. Um, I appreciate you more than words can say, and happy Father's Day. Um, bye. Um, I want to be able to walk in your pathway, and I hope that we can all fulfill um, the things that you set for us and be able to give back everything that you've given to us. I pray that we're able to give that right back to you when the time has come. Um, I love you so much, Dad, and happy Father's Day. Bye. You know, seeing where you're coming from and where you are now and seeing the kids that you've raised and this, I can't really see myself saying that I want to be anybody but you. So I just want to say thanks for all of that. And I love you, dad. And just thanks for saving the best for last, the best looking one for last, but it's okay. Praise the Lord. There is no greater joy than this, that your children can say such words. So what are you doing? Brethren, I have here a lot of messages for you. But I want to tell you, if you as fathers can just follow this man's path, you will not go astray. So if you are here, you have never received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to tell you, this is the day to do it. Because that is what has enabled his children to say those words. Because he's changed his life from Kalakuta to Jesus. And today, I, I, I always tell him, if you were still a Kalakuta boy, I would not have even looked at you twice. But God transformed him. And he's transforming lives. His children can say those words because he's in the Lord. So the question is, are you in the Lord? Have you received Jesus as your personal, as your personal savior? If not, bow your head and ask the Lord to come into your life. If you are doing what you are supposed to do and keeping focused on fatherhood, I want to use this opportunity to say, Father, thank you. Keep me keeping on in Jesus' name. Just go ahead. Just 30 seconds of prayer for, your, for yourself. Invite the Lord into your life. Invite the Lord into your life. If you want us to pray for you, because I'm going to call this man of God to come and pray for you. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, or you want to say, I want to be like pastor because he's following Christ, I want you to wave unto the Lord. And he will pray for you. Otherwise, just pray for yourself. Because you have the same mouth he has. Just go ahead and talk to God. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord God, for the men we have in-house. I pray for all of them. That, oh Lord God, you will keep them focused as fathers. In the mighty name of Jesus. And as many as are giving their lives to you today. Through the little message that has been presented. In words and in the video. Father I pray. That their lives would never be the same again. Thank you Father God. Blessed be your name. Take control of today. And let us truly celebrate our fathers in the house. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen.